Hello dear students, in the earlier episode of principles and processes of biotechnology, we have discussed the tools for constructing recombinant DNA. In the present episode, we will discuss the various processes facilitating recombinant DNA technology. Dear students, the recombinant DNA technology involves several steps in specific sequence such as isolation of DNA, fragmentation of DNA by restriction endonucleases, isolation of a desired DNA fragment, ligation of the DNA fragment into a vector, transferring the recombinant DNA into the host, culturing the host cells in a medium at large scale and extraction of the desired product. So students, get ready to examine these steps in some details. The first in the order is isolation of the genetic material which is DNA. As we know that the genetic material in majority of organisms is deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. For cutting the DNA with restriction enzymes, it needs to be in pure form, which means free from other macromolecules. Since the DNA is enclosed within the membranes, we have to break the cell open to release DNA along with other macromolecules such as RNA, proteins, polysaccharides and lipids. This can be achieved by treating the bacterial cell or plant or animal tissues with enzymes such as lysozyme for bacteria, cellulase for plant cells, chitinase for fungus cells. As you know that genes are located on long molecules of DNA intertwined with proteins such as histones, the RNA can be removed by treatment with ribonuclease whereas proteins can be removed by treatment with protease. Other molecules can be removed by appropriate treatments and purified DNA ultimately precipitates out after the addition of chilled ethanol. This can be seen as collection of fine threads in the suspension shown in this diagram. The next in the order is cutting of DNA at specific locations. It involves restriction enzyme digestions performed by incubating purified DNA molecules with the restriction enzyme at the optimal conditions for that specific enzyme. It should be emphasized that the joining of DNA involves several processes. After having cut the source DNA as well as the vector DNA with a specific restriction enzyme, the cut out gene of interest from the source DNA and the cut vector with space are mixed and ligase is added. This results in the preparation of recombinant DNA. The next process in the order is the amplification of gene of interest using PCR. Here PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. In this reaction multiple copies of the gene or DNA of interest is synthesized in vitro using two sets of primers which are small chemically synthesized oligonucleotides complementary to the regions of DNA and the enzyme DNA polymerase. The enzyme extends the primers using the nucleotides provided in the reaction and the genomic DNA as template. If the process of replication of DNA is repeated many times, the segment of DNA can be amplified to approximately billion times, that is 1 billion copies are made. Such repeated amplification is achieved by the use of a thermostable DNA polymerase which is isolated from a bacterium Thermus aquaticus. It remain active during the high temperature induced denaturation of double stranded DNA. The amplified fragment if desired can now be used to ligate with a vector for further cloning. The steps of the entire process are shown in this diagram. In the polymerase chain reaction, each cycle has three steps. The first step is denaturation. The second step is primer annealing and the third step is extension of primers. Dear students, the next process here is the insertion of recombinant DNA into the host cells or organisms. There are several methods of introducing the ligated DNA into recipient cells. 
these recipient cells after making them competent to receive take up DNA present in their surroundings. So, if a recombinant DNA bearing gene for resistance to an antibiotic for example, amphicillin is transferred into Escherichia coli, the host cells become transformed into amphicillin resistant cells. If we spread the transformed cells on agar plates containing amphicillin, only transformants will grow, untransformed recipient cells will die. Since due to amphicillin resistance gene, we are able to select a transformed cell in the presence of amphicillin. The amphicillin resistance gene in this case is called a selectable marker. The next process is obtaining the foreign gene product. When we insert a piece of alien DNA into a cloning vector and transfer it into a bacterial, plant or animal cell, the alien DNA gets multiplied. In almost all recombinant technologies, the ultimate aim is to produce a desirable protein. Hence, there is a need for the recombinant DNA to be expressed. The foreign gene gets expressed under appropriate conditions. The expression of foreign genes in host cells involve understanding many technical details. After having cloned the gene of interest and having optimized the conditions to induce the expressions of the target protein, we have to consider producing it on a large scale. Students, if any protein encoding gene is expressed in a heterologous host, it is called a recombinant protein. The cells harboring cloned genes of interest may be grown on a small scale in the laboratory. The cultures may be used for extracting the desired protein and then purifying it by using different separation techniques. The cells can also be multiplied in a continuous culture system wherein the used medium is drained out from one side while fresh medium is added from the other to maintain the cells in their physiologically most active log or exponential phase. This type of culturing methods produces a large biomass leading to higher yields of desired protein. Small volume cultures cannot yield appreciable quantities of products. To produce the desired proteins in large quantities, the development of bioreactors where large volumes comprising 100 to 1000 liters of culture can be processed was required. Thus, bioreactors can be thought of as a vessel in which raw materials are biologically converted into specific products, individual enzymes, etc., using microbial, plant, animal or human cells. A bioreactor provides the optimal conditions for achieving the desired product by providing optimum growth conditions which are temperature, pH, substrate, salts, vitamins, oxygen, etc. The most commonly used bioreactors are of stirring type which are shown in these figures. Finally, let us see the downstream processing in which after completion of the biosynthetic stage, the product has to be subjected through a series of processes before it is ready for making as a finished product. The processes include separation and purification, which are collectively referred to as downstream processing. The product has to be formulated with suitable preservatives. Such formulation has to undergo through clinical trials as in case of drugs. Strict quality control testing for each product is also required. The downstream processing and quality control testing vary from product to product. So dear students, now we have completed this chapter. Here we have discussed that biotechnology deals with large scale production and marketing of products and processes using live organisms, cells or enzymes. We have also studied that modern biotechnology using genetically modified organisms was made possible only when man learned to alter the chemistry of DNA and construct recombinant DNA. This key process is called recombinant DNA technology or genetic engineering. This process involves the use of restriction endonucleases, DNA ligase, appropriate plasmid or viral vectors to isolate and ferry the foreign DNA into host organisms expressions of the foreign gene, purification of the gene product, 
that is the functional protein and finally making a suitable formulation for marketing. Here large scale production involves use of bioreactors. With this we have completed the chapter on principles of biotechnology. Let us enjoy the fruits of biotechnology. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you.